Let's go to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up strife or anger. So what does grievous mean? Let's look it up. Very severe or serious. So what is this whole scripture here saying? Even if someone says something to you that is very mean, you may believe that you have the right to correct them. You may think that you have the right to set things straight. If you know that things are going to turn more bad, what is the point in saying anything? If you know that a person is going to act foolish with you or to you, why say anything? I know in some cases, if you don't say anything, things can really get out of hand. But in many cases, you really don't have to say anything. Just let things be the way that they are. And what you can do is pray about what is going on. That is the best thing to do. Other than combating with a person with their words. Arguing, fighting, fussing. There is no need with that. Let me say this. Let's say I say something and you disagree with what I said. So I try to explain things more and you still disagree with what I am saying. Why should I speak any more about the issue? <laughs> Because I said something, and even when I explained myself more, you are still disagreeing with what I am saying. So why should I be foolish and continue to try to get you to understand what I am trying to say? There is no point. There is no point. When you go beyond that, trying to force a person or push a person, even if you are right, when you go beyond that, trying to get a person to understand what you are trying to say and they are disagreeing with you, if you continue on that way, that is when huge arguments and fights happen. So to avoid all of that, what you can do, if someone disagrees with you and it seems like they are not going to agree with you, shut your mouth. Well, I just have to show that person that I am right. You see, that is a problem within yourself. If you feel like you have, you have to prove yourself to people, that you have to show people that you are right and you can't let things go, that shows a problem within yourself. There may be some people where a person tries to let things go. For instance, let's agree to disagree. Perhaps when you say that to some people, 
that makes them more mad because it is like in their mind they believe that you are rejecting what they are saying so they get more mad at you or they act in a very what word am i trying to use they act in a very ungiving not so much ungiving but they are not cooperative with you as if they are trying to say to you since you won't agree with me everything that i am doing for you right now or whatever else i am cutting that off now that is childish immature But my main point is, and this is one of many reasons why I don't really get into arguments. I don't get into fights because if someone says something crazy to me, I shut my mouth. If I sense that a person is trying to argue with me, I shut my mouth. I let them believe that they won the argument or not so much one the argument i let them believe that i am weak or whatever if they want to feel like they have won so be it you won <laughs> congratulations <laughs> but usually when you run into people like that that feel like they need to win every argument or every issue that people may speak about that shows an issue within that person and trying to speak common sense to people like that that tends to not work so your best bet is to stop talking especially when a person has pride if you run into a, a prideful person good luck <laughs> but in all cases what you should do and what i do too if i know that i have to run into a difficult person what i tend to do i usually pray before I get there. I pray about that person myself, asking God to set things straight, let there be peace, let there be harmony, let that person be calm, so on and so on. That is what we should be doing for people anyways. We should be for we should be praying for everyone anyways. So I pray that this makes sense. When you are trying to live for God, you have to do what it takes to keep the peace. Even if it means that you have to be, don't take my words in the wrong way. Even if it means that you have to be a doormat, so be it. If you have to be, what is that thing? I always talk about it. <laughs> a pincushion. <laughs> Even if you have to be a pincushion or doormat, so be it. Yes, it is a terrible feeling. But you are going to reap whatever you sow. And I was a doormat, or I am still a doormat, but from helping so many people, how can I say this?
I was allowing myself to be a doormat for such a long time. Now that I am in need now, I am being helped myself, not by the same person or people, but from others. Because you are going to reap what you sow. So when you give people your time and place effort into helping those people, even if you are underpaid, even if you don't get paid, you, you have to do so much for this one person because they are in need. Even if you feel cheated, the good things that you are doing for those people, it is going to come right back to you. I'm telling you. I am being helped so much. It really feels weird because I am so used to people calling me and asking me for this, asking me for that, calling me to pick them up, so on and so on. And, you know, I was thinking, <laughs> whatever, you know, I thought that no one really want, wanted to help me, but they wanted me to help them. But I'm telling you, I am, let me say this. And if I am saying this correctly, I believe that I am being helped more than I have helped others. Or maybe it is at the same level. Maybe. I think more. I am being helped more, a lot more. You not only reap what you sow, but you are going to reap much more than what you have put in. And I am a prime example of that. So I pray that all of this makes sense. God bless.